Hello, figure students. This is a lecture on hands and feet. <laughs> hands and feet. Hands and feet. Um, no, I don't just have those laying around my um, house, but uh, they came from somewhere. They will go back, but hands and feet. Here we go. All right, so we have on our arm hand, um, we have the radius, which is the bone that radiates, right? Which is this bone. Oh, where's my cursor? Here we go. This bone right here, radius. And then we have the ulna that comes down. And then this junction of bones right here, right below the wrist, is the carpals. And then we have the metacarpals, which are these right after the carpals, and then the phalanges that come off of there. Now, one thing to note here, so here we go. Carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. The phalanges, are broken up into three bones, the tip, the middle, and then um, the end. The middle here is a knuckle, right? And then at the fingertip is another knuckle. And the major knuckles are here at, so at the base of the hand are here at the joint of the phalanges and the metacarpals, okay? So, but proportionate wise, typically from the um, <clears throat> metacarpal knuckle of the middle finger and down to that fingertip is about the same proportion from the metacarpal to the carpal, so the, to the wrist, right? So this distance here is about the same as this distance here in general. And that always depends on how much of the hand you're seeing, if it's curled, if it's not, blah, blah, blah. All right, so I took a ton of scans from Jen L. Barksay's um, Anatomy for the Artist. Very incredible book. I really like that book. Um, oh, it's right here, actually. Mine, I'm ordering a new one, but this is what it looks like. Really great. Um, and I went ahead and I scanned a ton of pages from that book to help you with this assignment. Um, so just a few of those images are included in this PowerPoint, but I've compiled a ton of them into a PDF and that is available for you on the assignment page and that's to help you with this assignment. Use those resources. So um, they go ahead and show how the hand be the, the bones of the hand behave when the hand is turned, right? When it's turned down or when it's bent up and how the um, radius and the ulna behave with the carpals there and how those bones look at a flat um, on a flat plane like that and how they bend this way as well so interesting and um, so typically when hands are drawn or when the first time that you go draw hands um, it kind of looks like either sausage fingers or like pencils or something and a good way to really break down the drawing of the hands is to think of the access lines of each finger and then build out from there. I use a lot of straight line construction and that's how I'm going to teach you to do this and that is to help that really helps you to not draw sausage fingers um, because if you're thinking about the contours and breaking them up into straight lines that will help you to not do that. Another thing to think about are the placement of the knuckles. Um, so that's what this drawing is here, is to show you the proportions of the knuckles, well, the placement of the knuckles for each finger. Those proportions are the same. Now each finger is slightly different in size. So this is saying that the distance from the um, tip of the finger to the middle knuckle is the same as the middle knuckle to that major knuckle at the metacarpal. Oh, touched it. Um, so 
Yep, that's what that's saying right there. This is about one third. The fingertip is about one third between the distance of the fingertip to the middle knuckle. This um, last knuckle on the fingertip is about one third of that distance. And so those are those measurements there. And this is illustrating those access lines. Um, and the other thing to think about as well is sometimes the thumb, the, th the tip of the thumb lines up with the middle knuckle or can be sighted from the middle knuckle of the index finger there. And then on top of our bones, we have tendons. So you probably remember all those bones from uh, figure one. Um, and we want to kind of add to that layer with the tendons. This can get kind of complicated. It, not kind of, it's very complicated. It's the most complicated part of the muscular system. Um, as far as what you learn, what you're learning in this class, the hand, the, the forearm, that the post, both the posterior and the anterior views are the most difficult part. And that's the most difficult part of the exam. So, and again, these images are from Jenna Barksay's book. They are not from the exam, but it's just another look at that. Our fingers don't look like this, right? But that's what's going on under our skin. Um, the tendons come down, bunch together at the wrist, and then they separate and control each finger. Some fingers have more than one tendon, right? So, but for your muscles exam, this is the image directly from the muscles exam. Look at that, looks so strange. <laughs> it's like cut right at the end. <laughs> Ooh, a slice of skin off. So, so for the inside of the hand, that's that anterior um, supine uh, view there. Flexor carpi radialis is the one that comes here. It's that big one. This um, palmaris longus is the one that comes down and controls your palm. That's that number 34 right there. Sure, why not? Let's, let's label some of these. So we haven't done this yet. I'm not... I know all of these from memory. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, brachioradialis, the muscle in your forearm, that's that uh, thicker muscle that you see there. Uh, I know you probably flex that in the mirror every day. Extensor carpi radialis longus, number 28. It's one of those tendons on the outside of the arm. 29, that flexor carpi radialis. Palmaris longus is the one that controls the palm, it splits at the palm. Should know this probably, thenar and hypothenar. So those are the two muscles in the hand, the two major muscles on the palm of the hand. That's the thumb muscle, thenar, hypothenar. On the other side, flexor digitorum flexes the digits, I guess you could think of that to help memorize that. Palmaris longus, the one that goes down, it's long, it goes into the palm. Flexor digitorum right here. On the other side of the palmaris longus is the flexor carpi radialis. Don't know of anything to help you <laughs> with that one. Maybe it attaches to the radius right here. Uh, flexor carpi ulnaris goes along the ulna. Flexor carpi radialis on the inside of the of palmaris longus and then flexor carpi ulna or ulnaris is the one on the ulna on the outside here. Muscles in the forearm and the hand. Like I said, most difficult part of your exam. Okay. On the other side here, we have the uh, extensor carpi radialis, number 32. So extensor carp carpi ulnaris right here, not to be confused with flexor carpi ulnaris, which is number 35. 32 is extensor carpi ulnaris. 33 here, extensor digitorum communis. Now, that is the main tendon that comes down for the main tendons in the hand. 
extends our car by communis. Okay? Bow, 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 bow. Dorsal interosi. Now, I believe that interosi word is for like interior of the hand. So, inside the dorsals. <laughs> so, dorsal interosi, 41. And then the last two here on top abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis longus. Okay, now those are important because you're going to do a hand, um, at least one of the muscles and tendons. Um, yeah, a lot of names, but <laughs> that's okay. We'll get through it together. So I wanted to put this side to side here of the skeletal, the the hand skeleton and the tendons on top to kind of show how they kind of feed and layer over top. I thought might be a nice contrast there. So yeah, the, that's those tendons that you see when you kind of arch your hand back a little bit. Um, that's how you're able to control your hand. And then the skin wraps over top of the tendons on top of the, which are on top of the skeleton, right? <laughs> so, um, this is also included in that PDF to kind of help you uh, see the different positions of the hand and help, help you with that assignment. So, um, when you are sighting the hand, when you're drawing the hand, and when we do this in class, it's going to be really helpful to you to also cite the shapes of the negative space, just like with anything else, but shaping the negative or citing the negative space is going to help you as well um so the foot can kind of be divided into these kind of two chunks on the this is the side view but this is that um proportion there kind of gets divided in half um at the uh tarsal, the metatarsal joint there. So we have the um, tibia and the fibula up here. We have the tarsals, which are the big chunk here, including the heel bone. We have the metatarsals right here, and then the phalanges of a foot. Here's another side by side, and what's interesting, and you'll see another picture of this, is that there's one tendon that comes around and wraps and controls the four smaller toes. There's one tendon that comes down and controls the one big toe. That's why it seems like you have more control over that tendon, um, over, th over that toe, because it is the biggest one and it is all on its own. So this is the main tendon that comes around wraps around these four that is that um, extensor digitorum longus and then this one right here which is not on your exam is called the extensor hallucis longus it controls your thumb their thumb your big toe it goes between the tibia and the fibula it goes up in between those two bones in your lower leg. So this is from your exam. Um, uh, it's gonna be great. So um, yeah, it's interesting. I don't think they have, oh, they do have the extensor digitorum longus on the other side. They're just not pointing to it right here. So that's number 58 right there, which is over here. But you can see it right here, if you really look closely. This is the extensor digitorum longus, not number 46. It's the muscle next to it. It comes down and under this tissue here and controls the four tendons in the foot. Here you can see the extensor hallucis longus, which is not labeled at all on here, but that's the one that goes and controls your big toe and then it goes up between the tibia and the fibula up here. But this number 46 here 
tibialis anterior that goes directly on top of the tibia, which is the main bone in the lower part of your leg. That's the tibia. This is the fibula, the smaller bone. Um, so that tibialis anterior, number 46, kind of stretches right on top there. Extensor digitorum longus comes from here down and um, into the foot. And then that hallucis longus comes uh, to the big toe and then up and between the tibia and the fibula. Okay, and then uh, really the only things left over here are not in the foot necessarily at all, but the gastro gastrocinemius is um, the stomach of the foot is what that means. Um, gastrocinemius, um, obviously it's not a stomach, but it's taking on that shape kind of, so I think that's why it, uh, the, where that name came from. Uh, 52 is soleus. That's on either side of the Achilles tendon, which comes off of the, the calf muscle, the gastrocinemius, down to the heel. Over here we have uh, 54 is a peroneus longus, which comes from uh, the back side of the leg down into the side of the foot around the ankle. Peroneus longus. 58 was that extensor digitorum longus. Extensor digitorum longus, which is, you actually see it better right here. This is that front side there. And 59 is extensor digitorum brevis. Um, I can't really see what it's doing in there, but I believe it's another set of tendons. It's not the extensor digitorum longus, though. For kicks, this is the iliotibial band. Uh, at, I was about to say, okay, sartorius. Sartorius is number 55 here. It's that longest muscle in the body. Goes from the hip bone all the way down to the side of the kneecap. 56, adductor longus, right here. 60, the last one on the, on the exam is called the gracilis. And just for kicks, we can just go over these backside muscles here since we've never done it before. Gluteus maximus, number 48. Gluteus medius, number 47. 50 is semitendinosus. Biceps femoris, the bicep of the leg, number 49 there. Uh, 45, vastus medialis. 44, vastus lateralis. Lateralis and medialis. Rectus femoris, the front of the leg, down to the kneecap. And number 42 is tensor fascia lata, which my instructor, when I was learning this, uh, she would say, that she memorizes this one um, based off of, <laughs> she would say, um, tends to get fat a lot. -a. That's how you remember that. Tends or fascia a lot, -a, tends to get fat a lot. -a. And I'll never forget that. You know, so there you go. You have that. Okay, so this is just a diagram of um, the different axes, like axis lines of the foot. Uh, so the axis lines of the foot go horizontally through the ankle. So we can think about that as the ankle moves side to side. And through the lower, uh, the tibia of the leg, right? That's the bigger, mo the bigger bone in the lower leg. And we can use that as an axis line for the lower part of the leg to help us plan out the foot. So whether it's extended or flexed, um, we can use that to determine those axis lines. And um, again, with the skin, then goes on top of the tendons. And we have some nice drawings here where they've kind of let the tendon show through. The tendons that go down to each toe. Um, oh, and we already went over this. I forgot that I covered that in another... Um, in another one. 
Okay, so your assignment, you have two drawings, one drawing of four hands and one drawing of four feet. Be creative with the composition of the drawing, the placement of the hands and the feet on the page. Um, so not just like one, two, three, four, like have a little bit of um, uh, creativity with the composition. Uh, maybe have them touching, have them interacting. Have fun with that. Have fun with that. Be creative with the composition of the drawing at the, and the placement of the hands and the feet on the page. Each drawing should include the following. One cross contour, which we just did before mark making. One rendered drawing, which would be the equivalent of something like this, full value rendered. One skeletal study. Uh, so you can include the outline of the hand, which that would be best to include the outline of the hand uh, like this on the left side here. The outline of the hand and then the skeleton inside and then one for the muscle and tendon. So the same thing with here but with the muscles and the tendons. And not just like this but have it turning in some way, bent or interacting with another hand. Um, and same thing for the foot. So here's some examples of the skeleton inside an outline of the foot um, and then some tendon studies for you to look at. Okay, so one cross contour, one rendered, one skeletal, one muscle and tendon. You do not need to, you do not need to label the uh, skeletal study or the muscle and tendon study. I'm just concerned with you drawing it well and it looking nice. Um, you also have the option, and this might benefit your drawing, to add another hand, and that could be a drawing of choice. I just didn't put it on there because I didn't want to require it. You do have two weeks to do this assignment, uh, so we're slowing things down a little bit because uh, I want you guys to really study these and get have, make nice drawings. So these are some student examples, and for these assignments, uh, they had to do a planar construction study and then... Um, and a contour line study. So they did contour line and cross contour line and then a planar construction. So I took the planar construction out um, and I took the contour line drawing out and I left the cross contour line in. And you can do a drawing of choice if you'd like. So for this one, their drawing of choice was this hash mark thing, but honestly I think the drawing would be a lot better without that. And then for this one, I think is what that one ended up being. But, uh, and then same thing for, for this one. This is a really nice cross contour study right here. They decided to do gray paper. Um, just regular paper is fine for this. <clears throat> Nice uh, rendering and nice cross contour line here. And so yeah, and I think I took the other, yeah, the other examples out. But you can do that drawing of choice if you want. And what that is is like you get to uh, like do something different with it, like make it, make it a, a comic in a way, or you can abstract it or make it do something like turn into something else that's for anybody who wants to work more imaginatively namely Marcus I'm kidding. Um, but anybody really if that if you want to do that you can add another hand in there and that would actually probably help the composition to have five hands instead of four but because um, it's kind of difficult to place four things and not five or an odd number um, so so yeah, that is up to you, but really only four are required. Um, and yeah, these are gonna be fun. So, all right, and you have two weeks. And yeah, I'm excited.